Hello, you're watching AMA, and I'm Claude Shirati. Thank you very much for watching this video. There are now close to 400,000 Africans living in Australia. Many have arrived in this country from a forced migration background, but increasingly more are entering the country as a skilled migrant, and they are actively involved in contributing to the economic development of this country. Over recent years, anecdotal evidence has indicated there, there is an increase of uh, business and entrepreneurship activities within African Australian communities. More and more Africans are taking steps to engage into business uh, activities as a way to create wealth rather than simply to rely on holding a job or developing a career or worse, uh, receiving social security for those who either can't find work or choose not to work. In this interview, I'll be talking to Emete EJ. He is a Nigerian-born entrepreneur uh, who has recently started a, a telecommunications company. He is one of the first Africans to venture into this industry, and we're going to be talking to him to find out uh, what has motivated him to start the business. His business model combines profit-making with uh, social enterprise, and he is just as motivated in creating wealth as he is in helping others who are less fortunate than himself. Let's hear from uh, Emeta EJ. Emeta, thank you very much for making yourself available for this interview. Let me start by asking yourself to introduce yourself to our audiences. My name is Emeta Jessica. Tell us a little bit about uh, your company. I understand it's called uh, Emeta Telecom. Emeta Telecom is a, a telecommunication provider. Uh, we provide NBN, ADSA Plus, and mobile phone. Now, what led you to choose uh, this business? Well, it's a tough challenge, but uh, after done some feasibility studies on about the telco business, uh, they have a lot of potential residual income, and um, also uh, something I think that we be long for a long time. So it's a business whereby I don't have to be there to operate when it's running successfully. What services do you offer, Emete? We offer uh, uh, NBN, ADSA Plus. A mobile phone, landline. We also have the actual hardware. We say the hardware as well, the actual phone itself. How do you mix the business and the social enterprise? Explain to us how that works. Well, uh, MA Telecom is not just a uh, uh, just a profit-driven uh, company, but uh, it's a social enterprise uh, business. Social enterprise business. Uh, I think a lot of people may confuse between social enterprise business and NGO. Uh, social enterprise business is. Uh, a business generate uh, the, the profit we make go back to social cost of what we believe. And uh, with NGO, you actually ask people to donate money or get money, go make grant to support your social cause. And how does that work? If I come to Emeta Telecom and sign up, how does the money eventually go to social enterprise? The social enterprise is part of the business. The profit we make, let like 10% of the profit go to people sleeping on the street, like homeless people. And that's what the first thing we do first. So 10% profit, which means that if you make, let's say, $1 million, 10 uh, and the profit is 200000 for example, 10% of 200000 go to this social cause of what we believe. Do people get to choose which charity the money goes to? Yes, we have a partnership. We have a partnership that we actually to need the money to. But in the near future, we'll be running the program by ourselves, such as, for example, during summer, we can start to buy some screen, uh, give to the people in winter by bracket. Also, we have uh, a food shelter bus. We plan to get food shelter bus in future to distribute it to homeless people on the street. And uh, so, these are the programs we line up in the near future. So, your business actually started from an idea of giving to people rather than taking from people, as most businesses will do. Uh, yes, uh, I think most the, the the reason why as the camera, the reason why I've actually decided mostly to try to go on this uh, uh, social enterprise part of the business was I start to see a lot of the African uh, African brothers and sisters sometimes uh, sleeping rough or doing rough in food square and, and with that I think some of them find it difficult at the moment and I think uh, those are the areas I think we may ignore it right now because everybody actually leaves. You see, the government is there to take care of it. But the government also needs people like us to support the government to maintain it work properly. 
And I think that's the problem we have back in Africa because we think the government is there to do everything. Uh, nobody actually there to contribute their own quarter or their own share. Uh, if you remember, not long ago, um, one of the Australia Bologna give Australia government big money for research pro program this country. So, but where we from, uh, none of the people can say, well, I'm giving this money to, to support the government. So the issue here is, when I look at it, I find out that m by the time the business get bigger, the money we make will also be support the African kid living in, in a rough, facing domestic violence. So that Michael, this is my target. This is what I'm trying to do for my people. And I think for me to actually start to uh, approach, uh, I can form a government NGO business in Australia to start get government grant, but it's another way to do it. To do it, I do it in a different way that I have to ask somebody for money, but I actually need a service for you to su subscribe to MA Telecom. So the, your phone bill, the phone bill you pay every month, 10% of that of the profit is not good for the social cost what we believe. So that's the reason why I think it's reasonable for people to understand that if we're not profit, we're not profit driven uh, uh, directors or, or staff, but with the money we do, we, the profit we may will not go back to social cost. And it also go around to the community that we believe that needed it most. I haven't seen many Africans venture into telecommunications uh, industry. What led you to take that step? I was being introduced by one Australia guy uh, when he came to my office October last year. What message do you have for other Africans to encourage them to become entrepreneurial? I think it, the most part of it is to be very uh, uh, focus driven. You have to be consistent on what you're doing. And also have a mentor, uh, somebody you believe can push you uh, further. Uh, I think that's the number one thing that anybody has to do. So also do research and read more of books as well. So go to seminars and conferences and get information uh, to kick your start. And I suppose uh, another point is that if the business goes well, there will be employment opportunities for the uh, community, to the, the members of the African com communities. That's correct. Now, Emeta, if people are interested to take up your services, to sign up with you, what do they do? Uh, well, uh, right now we have, uh, if you want to take up the services, your NBN, or EDSA, or mobile phone, you can dial 1-300-585853. All right. Your last message, uh, Emeta? Well, uh, look, this model, this business model, is a model that we give it back to the community. And it's not just about me, not just about the directors or the staff, but it's the community as well. So uh, once you make a phone call, you should remember part of your money goes to the social cause of, of, of what, what in, people that need them most in the community, such as homeless people. And as I said before, uh, most of the Africans are right now so, uh, find it difficult at the moment as well. So they can also benefit from it. Uh, if you, uh, most of you may not understand, if you come to full screen now, then you can see a lot of them these days there. So it's not that easy, people thought, but again, with this platform, we create uh, uh, a good platform for my people that they can assess uh, some services for and uh, support them for their time of need. Emete, thank you very much for your time to Africa Media Australia. We wish you good luck with your new venture and we understand that uh, you have been quite successful in other businesses that you have uh, engaged in so we hope that uh, it will be the same with this new business.